Luminosity masks have become a widespread and widely adopted tool in Photoshop thanks to Tony Kuiper uncovering their potential for landscape photography and creating the first tutorials and actions beginning way back in 2006. They've now become so widespread that Adobe even decided to include them in the latest versions of Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. If you have never used luminosity masks before, then you might be wondering what are they and how are they useful? But before we can answer that, it's helpful to understand the fundamentals of layers, selections, and masks in Photoshop first. Layers are what allow us to add adjustments and filters without directly altering the background pixels of the image. They also make it possible to blend or composite different images together. Selections are how we isolate or select specific parts of an image. There are many ways to make selections, such as drawing them, using automated selection tools, or even selecting by color. Masks can be attached to any layer and are used to control what we see and what we don't see of that layer. Pure white on a mask completely reveals the pixels or the adjustment of that layer. And pure black on a mask completely conceals the pixels or the adjustments of that layer. Gray tones between white and black reveal or conceal in direct relation to how light or dark the shade of gray is. Masks can be either hard edged or blurred. Hard edge masks are all or nothing, and they have sharp boundaries between where the layer is revealed and concealed. This type of mask is good when you need an adjustment to stay within a distinct area, like a window, or a flower, or maybe a balloon. but if used in the wrong place, it makes the adjustment boundaries very obvious. Blurred or gradient masks have feathered or soft boundaries, so the areas that are revealed fade into areas that are concealed gradually. Blurred masks make it so adjustments blend smoothly, so it's harder to notice where they begin and end. But this also means that they can bleed into parts of the image where you don't want them and leave light or dark halos. Now let's talk about luminosity. Each pixel in an image has two qualities color and brightness or luminosity. If you take away the color, all you have left is luminosity. An image with only luminosity is a black and white image and it's composed of pixels of different shades of gray between pure black and pure white. So, luminosity values are black, white, and shades of gray. And mass are black, white, and shades of gray. If the luminosity values from an image are transferred onto a mask, you now have a luminosity mask. Different luminosity masks can be created by selecting different ranges of luminosity within the image, but all luminosity masks are a perfect match for the image, pixel for pixel and they feather seamlessly based on the tones in the image. To put it the most simply, 
luminosity masks are just like any other mask, but they're created from the actual luminosity values of the image. They're useful because they have both the precision of a hard edge mask and the feathering of a blurred mask all at the same time. Like any other tool in Photoshop, it's important to know when and how to use them. Some adjustments don't need any masking at all. Other adjustments might be controlled best with a hard edge mask or with a blurred edge mask. When you want to isolate adjustments or blending to a specific range of tones or luminosity in an image without seeing any adjustment edges or halos, then a luminosity mask is the right tool.